Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio. Welcome to the show. Remember, you can always find us at rvtalkradio.com. We are a podcast, and you can also catch us on Good Talk Radio. We're played, uh, I think, about three times a day, uh, different episodes, so check us out. Yeah. Anyway, uh, been interesting couple of days. Today, I am suggesting <laughs> that... There needs to be a war put on here against the nomad. Now, not all of them. Uh, there's folks out there that uh, have a good reason to be out there. But, you know, I'm watching videos over and over again trying to sell the nomad life into, and I'm talking about the nomads that are in vans, RTR kind of stuff. Come out here and join us. This is how you're going to do it. This is how you camp. This is how you, you should take care of your animals when you're uh, a nomad. And I'm telling you, nomads are people that have given up on the American dream. That's really what it is. And I want to talk about it. I think it's time for someone to say, hey, <laughs> Why don't you try to be a community person? Chase the American dream. If you want to be a nomad, move to Afghanistan, for God's sakes. <laughs> but really, guys, you got to look at these videos, and they're just saying, trying to justify a lifestyle of being primitive. And that's really all it is. And... They're trying to justify that lifestyle. And I just want to have a rebuttal to that. That's all. I'm not, a. I mean, for those that works out great, I'm happy for you. If you're a retired person and you're doing kind of a nomad thing, that's cool. I mean, it's no, not a problem. But this come out here to escape the fast pace of American life. Well, if you don't like the fast pace of American life, and going for the American dream, then go to Afghanistan or Saudi Arabia in the middle of the desert, and you can be the greatest nomad ever. Now those are nomads. So you want to be a nomad, huh? I'm talking about just escaping society and, and living in a van and looking behind your shoulder, wondering if you can actually stay overnight where you're staying. But most of all, you've got to learn how to poop in a bucket. Oh yeah, get yourself a good five gallon bucket and a garbage bag. Now I would suggest you double that garbage bag because I don't know, I, I, I really would think having a leaky garbage can in your five gallon bucket would be a problem. <laughs> and so. Forget about flushing toilets. Forget about even RV toilets that have the foot pedal. Oh no. They want you to come out there and live the freedom of life and poop in a bucket. Yep. Basically, that would add on to your bucket list for sure. And uh, I have news for you guys. That sucks. <laughs> and then... Just to take it a little farther, you got your bucket, you've got your bag. Now you got to take care of your bag. So, uh, uh, I mean, it's bad enough that, I mean, maybe you're in practice a lot if you have a pet with you, um, you know, using poopy bags and stuff, but now you got your own poopy bag. So, uh, <laughs> I guess <laughs> I need to come up with like a five gallon poopy bag with handles so it makes it really easy to tie up. But yeah, that's really what they're, they're just saying. Come enjoy the wonderful lifestyle of being a nomad. And find yourself a great five-gallon bucket. 
because that's your bathroom. And you get to share that wonderful five gallon bucket in your little van when you shut the doors, hopefully, and share that aroma and, and savor it. And, 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 and uh, well, you, I don't think you should be burning a candle in there. You might explode. But yeah, five gallon bucket life. That's what I'm looking forward to in life. Let's all, st in fact, I think you should teach this in school. Life is so much better and freedom and, and lifestyle of be living in the now will require a five gallon bucket. And kids, here's how we use it. But wait, there's more. Oh yes, there's much more. So uh, if you're gonna live in a van or even in some of these little trailers, you're not gonna have very much water. So uh, showers? <laughs> Right. So, folks, do you want to be nomad? Well, great. What you will need is a whole lot of baby wipes. That's right. That's how you take your showers. And in fact, I wouldn't. I would. You know, the bucket you got. Don't seal it up. I mean, <laughs> leave it open because that'll be a great place to put all your baby wipes. Then you can throw away your bucket bag. <laughs> yeah. So a shower consists of baby wipes, more baby wipes, and baby wipes. And then uh, the wash your face would probably require baby wipes. He wash your hair. I, I, if you have long hair, I'm not sure how you do that. But uh, probably a lot of baby wipes. So yeah. Um, so that, then you take all those baby wipes. You're going to have quite a pile of them put them in that bucket you know the bucket the one you just crapped in that one yeah and uh, uh it might have some liquid in it too that's why i s really suggest you double bag the bucket because you just never know and uh <laughs> yeah so i hope we get this clear because i want you to come out to be a nomad and i want you to find your bucket get yourself some good garbage bags and lots of baby wipes and and you might want to get the unscented ones because we don't want you feeling smelling too fluffy out there because uh you know we kind of look at you funny like you know you smell like baby wipes and that wouldn't be good i think a nomad needs to be a little bit more oh, i know <laughs> stronger smelling than baby wipes but wait guys wait guys there's much more oh yes so these nomads, they want you to come and join their lifestyle. Enjoy this nomadic life of freedom. And, oh yeah, there's no refrigerators. You can use an ice chest if you want. Um, and, you know, hopefully you get some ice. But, yeah, basically you're going to be eating food that hopefully doesn't need to be refrigerated. Or you're going to be eating out a lot. And, uh, but no, no, nomads don't want to be out in the real world in the public. Heck no. Heck no. So yeah, you'll be eating a lot of raisins and nuts and, uh, uh, I don't know, there's some instant things out there, but you got to be careful with the water supply because you only have a little bit of that. For God's sakes, don't use the water out of the bucket. <laughs> That's not good. No, you want to keep a separate jug or a couple of jugs. You can have like a lineup of gallon jugs under one of your chairs if there's some room. And cook your meals one at a time. Maybe you can get like packets where you can add water. Maybe you can get army rations. That would be the way to go. That way you really could keep the, the uh, water supply under control. And uh, that would definitely, I think it's glamorous. I think we're talking about a great lifestyle. Yep, get rid of everything. Buy a van. Don't buy a new one. Those are expensive. Get one that's used. Yeah, one that's 20 or 30 years old so you can work on it. Because you're going to have a lot of time on your hands out in the boonies there. Um, 
you know, when you're not using your bucket, you can <laughs> go outside and go work on the van and hopefully you can get that thing running to get you to the next destination because if you're on BLM land, you only have 14 days and you need to move on. But we won't tell anybody if you stay a little longer because we know that, you know, some things happen. Sometimes you can't start the van, but or maybe you're just being a little devious and just staying a little longer. And uh, instead of peeing in your bucket, you're probably going like behind a cactus or something. And uh, yeah, but you know, you're supposed to use the bucket. You got to stick, stick with that bucket. So you have a wonderful evening out in the nowhere land and you're, uh, it's evening. It's kind of getting dark um, and uh, it's getting a little cold and uh, you want to turn on a heater, but you are in kind of confined space. Oh, heck, heck with, don't worry about carbon monoxide. Go ahead and light up that buddy heater or whatever you got, or a little stove or something you got in there. Crack a window open just to make sure you don't die. But yeah, um, it, it's a, it's still a really good life. And, and maybe as you're sitting there and reading a book, but you can't leave the lights on too long, you want to kill the batteries. But maybe you could even turn on the TV and watch that one movie you got that you've watched at least 25 times you can watch that again because you're not going to get TV reception and if you do you know a lot of them I've heard have been very lucky to get Latin America uh, television shows they can't understand what they're saying but they are coming in on their television station and so it's a uh, uh, you can count on a good Latin America kind of a show down there in the Yuma or, you know, uh, Arizona, Southern area. Yeah. Um, uh, but you always got your one movie that you can watch over and over again. And uh, if you can save enough money, maybe you can have two movies. Wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, but you can't have that television on too long because <laughs> it's going to kill your batteries. And... Uh, yeah, uh, we don't want to kill the batteries because it's hard enough to get that darn van started in the first place, and let alone with a low battery. That would just, that would be, wow. Remember how glamorous all this is. Uh, and, of course, you know, if you're staying 14 days on BLM land and you're not coming to town at all, you know, you know you're probably getting quite accumulation of them bucket bags. <laughs> and you might want to not stay 14 whole days. You might want to find yourself a dumpster real soon because, uh, I, I, you know, you could be getting kind of backed up on bucket bags. And uh, that would suck. So for all great nomads out there, of course, you've got to have a YouTube show. you got to have that. So now you need more power. So... Gosh, you better you better get yourself like a solar panel or something on top of your van, and uh, you probably don't have much money. So, but you probably have a generator which you got to fit in that van too. Hopefully, it's a quiet one. And but if not, you better be out way out in the boonies, away from the other people, because they sure and heck don't want to hear your generator. And you're gonna have to run that laptop of yours, which requires power. <clears throat> and uh. Yeah, you can work on your videos. Yeah, and and while you're out there, uh, you know, get your videos out there. Try to charge your batteries. Try to make a video. Charge those batteries some more, and then it's time to upload it to the internet. What? You don't have internet? <laughs> well, what was I thinking? Um, nomads can't afford real internet. They gotta buy like air cards. Things like that. Um, they're quite affordable, hundred, two hundred dollars a month. I mean, if you're doing videos, you need the bandwidth. So yeah, so uh, you, you get out there, and even with those air cards, you might be getting like one bar. <laughs> it's gonna take a little while to get them videos uploaded, but oh, maybe you better pack up the van, go find yourself a a high class McDonald's or Starbucks. And hang out there for a while 
And Lord knows I sure hope you don't have a pet. Because, you know, you can't take pets into those restaurants and, and the McDonald's and stuff while you're uploading your videos. And you may not realize that even in the winter time, it gets kind of toasty out here. And, um, I mean, you'll be... Do you leave your laptop in the McDonald's and let it upload and go check on the dog? Or just stay in the Starbucks and get that video uploaded? Hopefully your dog's not dead when you get back because it's just, you know, 80 degrees out. That's a little, a little toasty, but dogs should be all right, right? Give them lots of water. Well, what water you can spare. And uh, please don't let... The dog drink out of the bucket for God's sakes some things are sacred stay away from the bucket dog so of course because that dog might be in the air going please take this bucket out for God's sakes I don't care how many bags you got it stinks in here so yeah so internet uh, that's a constant battle I don't care what they tell you how you are your whole life will be around trying to find internet. I mean, all the time. Because you don't, you know, you might get a couple of notes from your other nomadic friends. Because even though you want to be alone and be nomadic, you want to be connected. So maybe you don't truly want to be alone. You just want to be part of a community that talks to each other, has one thing in common, an old man and uh, a bucket. You guys could talk all about your bucket list, how you could improve your bucket. Maybe you could put like a, you know, talk together. Maybe somebody could start creating special bucket seats. So uh, not the bucket seats for cars, but bucket seats for your bucket. So you could have a better bucket. And then you could have a rendezvous and get together and, and show and, and maybe even talk to each other about who's got the best bucket. And, and and talk about your techniques of how to use your bucket and uh, how to utilize uh, your bags and and how to conserve on water because you don't want to put too much water in that bucket either so yeah you could have a bucket rendezvous that would be awesome bucket rendezvous yeah at quartzsite but let's take this a little farther about let's go back to the dog so you're out in these, what you think is kind of privacy and freedom to these BLM land that other nomads have been using and and peeing on the you know late, the closest cactus and uh, other dogs have been there and stuff like that. But uh, you better make sure that your dog has all their shots because I don't know if they told you about the desert all, but there's like uh, desert fever, which really uh can be a problem with that so you better get a shot for your dog for that um, and then uh, down here in the south heartworm issues with dogs is higher than up north uh, you, need, you need to be taking medication for that <coughs> uh, your dog and uh, uh, you may not realize it but we have scorpions we have uh, interesting spiders and um, of course, we got the cactuses, which dogs get into, can be really an issue. But we also got these little things called rattlesnakes. <clears throat> so, I don't know if you know this, but if your dog's bitten in a wrong area, you got about 20 minutes to get them to a hospital that's open 24 hours, especially if it happens in the evening, because a regular vet won't be open. And they uh, better make sure and uh, have a vaccine. Now, that's iffy if they got it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, there's also a vaccine that will help you maybe get 40 minutes called a rattlesnake vaccine down here. So, uh, uh, yeah, your, your pet's going to love all this freedom of running around and, get, you know, and, and boy, what's those pointy things called cactuses? Those kind of suck. The dogs don't like those much when they get stabbed by them. But uh, they really don't like it when they get bit by a rattlesnake. But it looked like a fun toy at the time. Especially if your dog's never been in the desert before and you bring them down here. They have no freaking clue what these critters can do to them. <laughs> but that's alright. You're a nomad. You're a nomadic person. 
You've got freedom. You're living the dream. You've got your bucket. But wait, there's more to this wonderful life of being a nomad. Yes, there's laundry. Yes, laundry. Oh, well, you, you probably don't worry about laundry that much because, you know, you're out in BLM land. You can go a little longer without, you know, you can get a little more mileage out of those shirts and pants and underwear. Uh, rotate them a little bit. Turn them inside out. I mean, you know, who, and, then, and then, of course, you don't really want to hand wash your stuff because you don't really have that much water. So you probably want to go to a place like a laundry mat. Oh, those are wonderful. First of all, I mean, first of all, I hope you got enough quarters. Make sure you get quarters and get to that laundry mat. You know, the, you know the one where it's been used thousands of times by strangers. Uh, the one that, you know, put that dirty old pet rug in there before you put in your nice silk underwear. Um, you know, the the one with... Uh, uh, the sandy clothes and, and, and you know, uh, the dryers, uh, you know, when they're running, you can kind of hear s dirt and, s and, and <laughs> rocks kind of running in the background there. Yeah, those things. So, and, 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 of course, you know, uh, uh, everybody that's used it before you was very clean and maybe, you know, didn't have anything contagious or anything. Don't worry about that. It's good. No problem. And hopefully you got hot water. You know, because if those have been running all day, it's, it's kind of pushing the hot water situation. But yeah, it's 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 um, it's workable. It's workable. Uh, of course, when you walk into the laundry mat, most people look at you going, "Wow, you really need to use the laundry mat because uh, you kind of smell like a bucket." But yes, there's more. There's so much more. But yeah, so. Let's say it's time to finally take that shower. You know, the one you've been kind of putting off for a couple of weeks, months, or weeks, uh, days, I hope, um, probably weeks. Anyway, so, gosh, where am I going to go? I could pretend that I'm a member at a gym and use their facilities. Or, better yet, I could go to a truck stop. That's a great place. And, tr and truckers love RVers, especially van people. Especially, you know, and, and they love how they come in and use their facilities and, and, and then, you know, uh, and, and of course, it's really nice to use these facilities knowing that they're so clean. I mean, they're just sparkling clean. Not really. I'm kind of kidding on that part. Uh, but yeah, uh, so, you know, some of them truckers, they're, they're kind of nomadic. So it's been a little while since they may have... Uh, hit the shower and uh you know don't worry about touching the same things they've touched or or uh, you know uh, any diseases or you know things like that because everybody's used that shower before you were was super clean people um i think and those trucks they might have something in common with you you may they may have the same kind of bucket uh, yeah, uh, so you could maybe share some bucket stories with each other. Um, maybe even go look at each other's buckets and see how you've converted them to make them more comfortable buckets. Ooh, I just had a terrible thought. Could you imagine having a full bucket and maybe you just have the lid on it and so And for some reason you had to put the brakes on real hard when you're driving out to the city to go get rid of your bucket and it tips over. Oh, that would not be a pretty sight. That could some. That's the kind of an event that could last and last, especially if you got carpeting in your van. That's got to be a nomadic nightmare. That's got to be one of the worst things that could ever happen as a nomad is tipping over your bucket in the van. That that would really really suck. Heck, even your dog would probably go. You got to get me out of this damn place. You tipped over the bucket. We gotta live in this like eight square feet of living space, and my nose is a little bit more sensitive than your nose. Uh, I don't want to be a nomadic dog anymore. <laughs> Open that door. I'm running for my life. Please let me out of this van. But look at the bright side. 
if you're a guy, well, girl too, if you want to, you don't have to shave anymore. It's it's over. Just let that beard flow. Let that hair grow. And, you know, of course, you get my age, you're lucky to have much hair at all. But, hey, I could get a nice bushy beard and turn all white and all that stuff. I could be like, I could be like your leader. I could be that Santa Claus looking kind of guy that could be out there motivating you to come out here and live this wonderful lifestyle. Put it on your bucket list. Yes, to come out and just let the hair grow. And I'm women too. You let it grow. Underarms, legs, everything. Long ear. Who cares about that three inch piece of hair coming off of your ears? It doesn't matter anymore. You're nomad. You've got, you're living the dream. You're living that freedom away from society and responsibility. The only thing you need to take care of is your bucket. But you know, the big, the big thing you could really look forward to is what they call the RTR with the, uh, you know, rendezvous with all the other hundreds of nomads out there. And there's a handful of them who are just like you gave up everything, have no education or maybe even have an education, but no experience, no job, no skill. And, and you guys can get together and talk about your bucket list and talk about, well, how in the heck do, do you cook? Maybe I could save up enough money. Maybe my YouTube channel could be strong enough that I could afford my own solar panel. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Meanwhile, I'm, you, know, you guys could compare like the different flavors of cup of soups and Lipton's and, uh, and, and Top Ramen and, and say which one's the best and how could I modify that to put like dried peas in it or something that, that really make that top ramen a little bit better uh I, I you know maybe you know find yourself some spicy hot dogs or something that can keep for a couple of days that before they spoil because you, know, you don't have a refrigerator anyway but you know what i mean um you could maybe get ah i know what you could do you could put beef jerky in your top ramen really that would really bring it up a level there would be something the great you could share that at the rtr guys my recipe for top ramen and beef jerky and using minimal amount of water yeah that'd be great but maybe maybe you're not in a van maybe you've taken it up another level to a trailer or or maybe a camper and um you know, you're gonna you don't want to move your rig, you don't want to lose your spot. So you're gonna use one of them mobile blue tanks that you can dump all your waste into and take it to a dump station. And what fun that is. Oh my god. So uh I recommend you don't get too big a one because once you fill one of them puppies up, they're a little heavy. And uh yeah, there's you know, you could devise some way to dump from the bottom and move it up to the truck into that tank um, or just leave it down below fill that tank and somehow figure out how to get it up into the truck bed now that it weighs a hundred pounds and um, you know and those things are so clean and so fun to work with and uh, yeah but you just take your little blue tank fill it up with all that great gray and black water and and you could stay out as that whole 14 days uh yeah and 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 what fun it is to open those up and put those tank little hoses on and dump them and and, and it's so pleasant so i mean it's it is a step up from the bucket there's no doubt but uh yeah boondocking is the way to go and we're talking freedom we're talking no responsibility no reason why you need to get experience at any kind of skill in your life and yeah and i think that would look so great on your resume once you realize that this lifestyle that they want you to do is kind of got a nowhere kind of going you know this youtube thing they talk about it's going down and down and down and uh realizing that maybe eventually you have to go get a a job 
and and nothing looks better on a resume than saying I've lived as a nomad for five years I have managed to fix my RV take care of my bucket and learn how to cook with minimal water and my dog's still alive so I should have a job um, and I think I should be a brain surgeon because I just think I should I think I should have at least a hundred thousand dollar job because I think I should uh, yeah but and I was the best nomad out there I mean I had the stuff I had the best lawn chair the best propane stove and I had great lights and I had a a buddy heater and and it worked really well and I didn't kill myself with carbon monoxide poisoning I, I deserve that hundred thousand dollar job okay so we had our fun but my point is here is there's all these videos of saying hey come out here and be a nomad get away from society get your privacy live the dream and nobody's out there saying wait a minute have you really thought this out for God's sakes people this is America and the American dream looks a little different for everybody but really the guy is sitting in front of a camera going uh, I'm a loser and I like you to be a loser with me and and I'm trying to tell you be a winner work hard fight the fight get the education learn skills get a retirement and then or or find get the skills of be like a programmer or something like that and be and be able to get a virtual job where you can do uh, make a living on the road or become a uh, traveling nurse or something like that then come out here and then have the best of everything as far as being a nomad get yourself a rig that actually has a bathroom get yourself a rig that you could actually generate good power get yourself a rig with good uh, solar and a generator system and holds lots of water and it works well and it's got a warranty on it and it's insured that's what you should be if you want to be a no bad so bad do the work first earn your keep and learn that the American dream can look like a nomad life but you gotta put the work in first up front to run around and just try to escape responsibility by living this nomad life that they tell you is so glamorous behind the scenes it's not that glamorous behind the scenes they don't show you the broken rigs or being a, uh, stuck in an abandoned area they don't show you changing oil in the middle of the desert they don't see you dealing with your pet being sick in the vet because you don't understand what happened but there's things down here in the desert that it's just not healthy for pets they don't tell you how much money they have. if you do take good care of your pets the vaccinations and the checkups that you'll need to do cost hundreds of dollars they don't tell you that some of them actually did get a have good jobs and put away some money and could be nomads and a lot of them don't tell you that they're out there on disability or they're out there on a medical reasons or they're divorced and have a fixed income coming or maybe they're on Social Security and in some of those cases that's the best way they can live because they're on a fixed income but yeah become out here and be a nomad I'm not telling you that I'm getting a check for disability that I don't have to work for anymore I just get this check I can live off that they're not telling you that and they'll tell you about the bucket you have to use the bucket <laughs> you can get a pretty bucket you can get a colorful bucket you can modify the top of that bucket but the bottom line is a van life in living in the van life you have gotta learn how to use the bucket or learn how to go behind the cactus in the desert which they do not appreciate 
Or maybe you can dig a hole and bury it. Oh yeah, that's that's nice. That's real nice. Yeah. But I keep having to ask myself, I live in the United States. We're thriving. Our country is thriving. And the way it thrives is you participate in it. When you participate in it, you can start reaping some of the benefits. But if you throw your hands in the air and say, I give up, I'm going to be a nomad. And I'm just going to try to get a YouTube channel. Maybe I'm going to sell some stuff off of Amazon. And maybe I can work on my art and and do some art shows. Uh, it's getting hard, guys. It's getting really hard to do that. If you haven't noticed, there's more of you. And there's more. In fact, I was just watching a video from uh, Living Free. And he's like, I think I'm ready to get out of this stuff. Because they were some of the first people to ever do videos. It was like... Uh, Living Free, there's like uh, uh, Eric, he was, I don't know, he just got lucky, but his luck will run out. And of course, there was the other guy um, up in Canada was real popular. Line Screw's still doing real well, but he's actually got his act together. He actually has skills. And uh, <laughs> I know some of you guys go, oh, I have a skill, I can change out the, a bucket. That's not what kind of skills I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, I don't know. It's uh, It needs to be... Someone needs to tell you what's going on out there. And you need to earn your keep first. You need to produce or have a resource that you have that makes you unique. To be able to earn income, because I don't care if you're a nomad or not, everything costs money. Gas costs money, insurance costs money. And and if you actually go out and meet some of those nomads, ask you, ask them right away, what are you doing for uh, health insurance? Or or you may even find out a lot of them is like, well, I'm just collecting welfare. I'm kind of letting... You know, uh, people think I'm living here and stuff, but I'm out here in the BLM land enjoying my foldable chair <clears throat> and uh, bucket and and living off the state. How nice that is. Makes you proud, doesn't it? So, I don't I just think it's necessary because each video over and over and over and over of how wonderful it is to be a nomad and living in a van. Now, I want to make it clear, there's other kind of nomads that are just fine. They're, they've got careers, they're retired, they have a fixed income, they've made investments in their life, and they, they've earned the right to be a nomad. But to cheat life, to try to get out of the, oh, nine to five job, don't want to do that. Um, or I'm going to have children and put them in my closet. Uh, yeah, that's that's cheating life. And that's cheating other people. It could be even cheating your kids. I don't know. I just, uh, I, f I find it sad that people have to look at that as an alternative and give up. That's really what you're doing is giving up. Hey, Sherry and I throughout the years have been beaten down to nothing and we had a great opportunity to say I give up and we fought it and brought ourselves back not only once but twice in in our lifetime we were beaten down and you just get back up again go back to work and, and do things and rebuild things and just because you might be down and out once uh, I have news for you. It's going to happen over and over again for some people. And you have a choice. You can either get in there and play the game, or you can just sit on the bench, be a nomad. That's really what you are. You're sitting on the bench. And that's all you're ever going to do is just sit on the bench. Now, I'll be the first one to admit that you know, simplifying your life, getting more minimalist, um, being able to go camping basically every day, 
there is a draw to that. There's no doubt. But when you start living the life, pretty soon when you're sitting out there in nowhere, and you open up those side doors in your van, and you got your dog, you better actually keep on a leash, and you're just sitting there looking out the pretty view, you got a great view and everything, pretty soon you're going to have to start asking yourself, is this it? Is this what I'm going to do all my life? Is this sit here enjoying this great freedom? And I'm going to sit here and this is the best. Just the best. And I have news for you. It gets old. And it's stuff you're hearing about YouTube. Oh, you can make big money and stuff. Well, more and more, they're putting more restrictions. And they're really leaning towards the big guys, the ones with big shows, you know, the ones that fly fly to Japan and film dead people. <laughs> they have a little bit bigger budget than you do. And they're, you know, the, these guys that have been around for a while, they're already saying, I mean, back in the day when they first started, there was only a handful of these people doing little channels, uh, Chris, uh, Chris and uh, Lane Screw and uh, Eric and a couple of people and and you know their channels were exploding and the money was coming in and uh, uh, then more people came along and these other guys uh, sit in front that look like Santa Claus going come on out of here this is the life. And you'll find out that it's, it's, it is a life and it is freedom and you are kind of living a dream, but you're sitting on the bench. It's, it's, you'll ask, start asking yourself, is this all there is to my life? Is this my achievements? And if you got kids or anything like that, I'm sure that they go, uh, I don't think I want to be like that and hopefully you've given your at least your kids some dreams of of success of doing something in their careers so they could have a house and own a new car and maybe have decent insurance and they have children where they can actually have all the latest things in life because we're in america we live in the united states and it's prospering and there's lots of opportunities. And if you don't feel like you have one, maybe you need to ask yourself, is it me or is it society? I know it's society you're running from. But maybe you need to learn how to join the team by going to school, learning a skill, get certified in something. If you love RVing so much, Learn how to fix RVs and get certified. You could be one of those mobile inspection people. You could actually even start a mobile RV repair uh, company. And you, if you do that, you need to know how to pay taxes. You got to know how to do your books. You got to know how to be do licensing. You got to know how to do accounting. Yeah, the things that come from school, the things that come from experience the things that come from technical schools skills so i'm just saying enough of the salesmanship on becoming a nomad some people need to get on this internet and start selling real life the american dream enjoying rving the way it should be Weekend warriors shouldn't be treated as hostiles. Those people are working hard five days a week, if not more. And they come in and you guys say, oh, the damn weekend warriors are here. Excuse me? Yeah, they're weekend warriors. And they're working hard. And you probably will notice they probably have a much better rig than you. And they probably have very happy kids with all the educational tools and latest things that parents can now provide for their kids. And they go home to a house with flushing toilets. In fact, those kids that come up, probably are weekend warriors look at some of those outhouses and going, 
oh dear god dad <coughs> or mom can we please use a real toilet I can see mom and dad running out here's your bucket Billy and here's your bucket Sally <laughs> let's go camping <laughs> it doesn't need to be that way anymore and yes when you go hiking or do hikes in the mountains and stuff you have to rough it and stuff like that but you know when you get home there'll be a flushing toilet waiting for you a clean shower with your cooties on it nobody else's a laundry a washer and dryer that you own that only you've owned <laughs> it's only had your clothes in it you know what's been through that laundry you know what's been uh, going through that washing machine and dryer and yes, you can own a few more things than just trying to be a minimalist. Okay, I got a new cup. That means I got to get rid of a cup. No, you can now have two cups. Yes. Because they didn't tell you when you go nomad, you've got to kind of like live off of one cup. You might have two cups. The best cup is a paper cup so you can burn it. Those are glamorous. So... Is a weekend warrior so bad? I say that's a pretty cool family. Work hard during the week. Enjoy their RV. Maybe take a Friday or Monday off. Go enjoy the parks. Have a nice rig. Be, have hookups. Have flushing toilets. Good food. Refrigerators. No buckets in those places. What's wrong with a weekend warrior? Is it because... They're successful? I know there's a lot of them. They fill up the parks and stuff like that. But don't you think they deserve it? Don't you think they work hard all week? Do you think they're sitting on the bench? You think they just like living? Are they living the, the American dream? Or are they just living the dream? Do they feel like they have freedom or not? Or is your life better wearing that t-shirt that you've had over and over again? You probably haven't washed it in months. Or struggling to have decent health insurance. But you have freedom. You're out there. You get to enjoy the world. You can go where you want. You can be where you want. If you don't like your neighbors, you can move. Well, you know, actually, those weekend warriors can do that too. And what if you have an emergency? What if you uh, like to have pets? Maybe you want a bigger property. We can actually have some animals and a garden. Bet you miss, if you're a nomad, you might, if you're lucky, could maybe have one plant if you could get it to live. So why are you looking down on those people? I have news for you. They're looking at you going, are you kidding me? What caused these people to give up? What caused these people to not try anymore? Why are they just sitting on their asses on the bench when they could be playing? They don't have to be the best at it. Just come out and play. So some of those nomads, they sit on the bench. Now other nomads, they're fine. They're, they've got income. They can enjoy what they do. They, can, they don't have to live 14 days out on a BLM land because they have no money. They're out there 14 days because they can be. And then they can go right to a really expensive RV park right after that and take care of their tanks and enjoy all the amenities. And if they got sick, they have great insurance. And even some of the more classier RVs out there got their own uh, washers and dryers and dish, even dishwashers. So you weekend warriors, grab a camera, put some really nice background behind you. Make sure, please shave, <laughs> please comb your hair and wear that clean shirt. And tell the world how happy you are. Tell the world how nice it is to have good equipment. 
tell the world, tell the RV industry, tell the RV nomads, this is really fun because I'm not sitting in the dirt trying to fix my transmission. Do videos of saying how nice it is to have a refrigerator. And not only that, it shows all the great food you cook. Now there is a couple of channels that do that and that's awesome. And then show how nice it is to be at a great RV park. You know, the ones with swimming pools and the ones that may have tennis and some activities. Some of them even have some really cool things for the kids. Do videos like that. Because the people that are doing videos right now that call themselves nomads are saying, give up, sit on the bench, come on out here, live the dream, whatever that dream is, which is a whole lot of nothing. Or we could have people like you, which is a majority. Of course, probably the reason why you're not doing videos like that is you're busy. You're doing stuff. You don't have extra time in your hands. You're not sitting in a little van in the dark with a little lantern or a little flashlight or some little LED light trying to upload a video that's taking forever and burning up all your bandwidth on your little wire card. No, you're out in your RV doing fun things and you're not hiding behind a camera and you don't feel it's necessary to tell the world that this is what life is all about with an RV. You know, the 90, 95% of you that aren't really doing videos, you're just being RVers and having fun. And you're enjoying the RV parks and you're camping with your kids. Not primitive. All the amenities of home are using that RV. And by the way, because you have a skill, you have a labor, you have a job, you can afford to have a decent rig. Whether it's a trailer, a fifth wheel, a motorhome, camper, the best of the best. At least something that works well, is dependable, and you're not working on. Because the last time, last thing you want to do as a weekend warrior is to be working on your RV. You want to be enjoying your time with the kids or your partner on the beach, in the lake, on a hike. You certainly don't want to sit there and figure out how I'm going to conserve water or where am I going to dump my bucket? <laughs> the biggest concern you have when you leave the park is how long is the line for the dump station? That's your worst worry right there. And then you get home and put your RV away and go back to work and fulfill your, your life with all the great things America has to offer. And when you get a little tuckered out, pull out that RV and become a weekend warrior. So everyone, if I had a suggestion, I really suggest you become an RVer, enjoy the United States, travel. In fact, put it on your bucket list. Hey, thanks for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We'd really appreciate that. Have a great day, be safe, and enjoy your RV.